We've all heard the step. Your car spends 90% of its time parked. So, if a large chunk of electric vehicles were vehicle to grid or V2G enabled, in which electrons are sent backwards and forwards between the battery and the grid, that could supply all of the world's short-term grid energy storage requirements by 2030. Capitalising on an existing stock of batteries to turn EVs into smart, distributed energy storage devices to balance the grid, make it greener, save drivers money, or provide emergency backup power, seems like an obvious solution. But it's not totally straightforward. The hardware exists, but standardization, communication protocols, and getting all of the car companies, charging operators, and energy companies at various grids on the same page has proved somewhat of a stumbling block. Fortunately, there are quite a few people trying to figure it out. Like Fully Charged? Then you'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric Expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, energy and transport professionals go free on the first day. One of the groups trying to figure this out is Classic eCars, who have taken a slightly different approach. Their workaround means that V2G can be retrofitted onto any EV capable of being DC charged. We went to visit them at Fully Charged Live to find out how. This T2 is actually capable of going vehicle to load with up to 3 kilowatts of power and it's also capable of going full vehicle to home and vehicle to grid with up to 20 kilowatts of power in DC combination. So tell us, because this approach is a little bit different from traditional V2G, can you just walk us through the sort of bits and pieces that make this possible and why is it a little bit different? Yes, uh, it is different, uh, exactly. We have opted to go for the DC coupling in uh, bidirectional charging because this means uh, the fewest changes in the car itself. Basically, every DC charging capable car is also capable of DC bidirectional charging as far as the communication protocol allows for it. This is why we went for this combination because we only adapted the communication board within the vehicle and then we built a separate charging station representing the other communication part and this is coupled to a stationary storage at your home. So this car acts as a surplus of the stationary storage you have at home and just simply enlarges your battery storage. Classic eCars have opted for DC-DC coupling, meaning that with a little modification to the communication system in the vehicle, DC electricity can be taken out of the battery. But this has to be coupled with a charger that has an inverter to turn that electricity into AC so it can go back into the grid. The real utopia is AC coupling, in which an onboard charger in the vehicle can convert the electricity from the battery into AC and send that directly back into the grid via the charging cable without the need for special chargers. This requires a few more modifications in the vehicle and whilst ultimately would allow for more widespread use of V2G, it is more complicated. Why haven't other V2G people opted for this kind of approach? Because you need a far more complicated system at your home. The car is simpler, but the system at your home is more complicated. You need to have a stationary storage, which not many private households have and uh, in the end it is a little more expensive than going for the AC coupling which of course again needs a car capable of this and because we started this project in 2014 we simply didn't have any AC capable parts for the car uh, at hand there were no available on the market so we decided to build our own system and that's why we go for the easier DC way well, for V2G to work, it needs a few key things. Number one, inverters. Electricity needs to be returned to the grid in AC, alternating current, and energy from the battery is in DC. So either the charger or the vehicle needs to have an inverter. Number two, interoperability. Both the car and the charger need to be able to talk to each other, such that when the cable connects the two, they both know what's what. This is covered by the ISO 15118-20, which is the standard that outlines what's needed for V2G firmware. Now, if a charger and a car that is already capable of DC charging are ISO 15118-20 compliant, 
then the car could become DC bidirectional via an over-the-air software update. In theory, at least. But that would still need remote control and monitoring of the charger via some kind of communication protocol. Typically, this might be done by some sort of flexibility partner or aggregator. And for compliance with the local grid and all of the local wiring and current protections, which gets pretty messy. Now that still doesn't quite cover AC-AC coupling, in which the charger needs to have an onboard charger. So there are loads of different people needed to come together to make this possible, and getting this up and running depends on car companies, energy companies, and grid operators all seeing the value. However, the tide may be turning. Take the Ford F-150 Lightning, for example. It has a bi-directional cable to power a house if bought with the Ford Home Integration System. Polestar and Volvo are also busy working on VTG trials and the City of Utrecht and OVO have been real trailblazers in the space already. And here in the UK, Innovate UK have a load of projects underway. And what are some of the benefits of VTG? Why should we bother in the first place? Well, basically it is, the, the main benefit is having an enlargement of your own stationary storage at home. So you can have a very small stationary battery at home and have your normal day car just add up to this and therefore power your home basically 100% renewable and self-sufficient in the end. Curiously, had Chadamo been more widely adopted, V2G might have accelerated that much more quickly and that's because Chadamo is already compatible with DC V2G. It's also why Nissan Leaf has been used so extensively in various V2G trials. But here in Europe, and in fact across the world, CCS is the way more widely adopted protocol, and that means we've got a little bit of work to do when it comes to V2G. Now fortunately, Charin, the body that promotes and advocates CCS standards, is hoping that the ISO 151820 standard will come into effect by 2025. What's needed to accelerate the adoption of V2G? I think to accelerate the adoption of V2G, you on the one hand need both the car manufacturers and the charging manufacturers, charging equipment manufacturers, to actually work together and find an interpretation of the new 1511.8-20. They both accept and work on because it still leaves some undefined aspects in there. And on the other hand, you might adopt some sort of regulations on the open market like for example a few years ago the catalytic converter started becoming mandatory in every car why not simply make v2g uh, mandatory in every car from 2025 2026 whatever especially if the dc or the ac might be quite small changes inside the car itself there are already a load of cars available with vehicle to load or V2L capability. In this instance, the EV does have an inverter on board to convert DC into AC, but importantly, it doesn't have a bi-directional charger to use for sending the electricity back into the grid. Instead, V2L has power outputs, which appliances such as phones, kettles or what have you can be plugged into. That's what you'll see on the Ionic 5, Kia EV6, the new Nero, MG4, MGZS, Genesis GV60, BYD Atto 3, Cupra Born, and VW ID models. The VW T2 is a really, really interesting choice for this project because the new VW ID Buzz is going to be V2G compatible via an over the air update. You really are living in the future. But if you don't have a new VW ID Buzz, something like this is a perfect V2G solution because it can be retrofitted onto any vehicle. But there are some intermediary steps. Smart charging can prioritize charging during off peak hours when electricity is cheaper and demand is lower easing the grid's burden during peak times and offering EV owners lower charging rates based on real-time energy prices. This is the most logical step to a seamless grid meets EV symphony. That said, we are definitely standing at the precipice where we can stop thinking of electrons like petrol to be consumed and more like data to be traded, swapped and gamified. I want to say thank you to Claire Miller, the most amazing energy and mobility expert, for her expertise when scripting this episode. We'll be following more V2G stories, and in the meantime, check out these ones to delve a little deeper into the world of V2G.